Hello, wonderful interwebs! It is I, David, sweatiest and least fit of all the, well, the 3D printing nerds today because I am competing with my Prusa for your attention. Um, I'm printing some little flexi beasts for um, my kids at McCordick. Um, well, not my kids, but the kids I visited uh, yesterday at McCordick. Uh, this, God, this amazing school uh, for kids with developmental and physical disabilities. I had the best time. I went to film because there's a strike, the strike action stuff on, my kids aren't allowed to do a field trip there um, and see the school. So I thought, aha, I'll get around it. I've been working, trying to work around this damn strike stuff the entire year. But I thought, I'll do a virtual tour. I'll bring a camera or a couple of cameras and just, you know, film some stuff. And uh, what a, just what a great way to spend the day. Uh, I had the best day yesterday. It was between, I did the, I did the, um, uh, the filming at McCordick. I then went and did um, the Edge of Tech podcast with all my 3D printing friends. Uh, just amazing night. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it in a sec, but, um, but just, yeah, fantastic. This, I should tell you, is a burn and learn. This is my bit to stay alive and fit long enough to raise my amazing son and to enjoy my coming twilight years with the brilliant, beautiful wife, Jane. Uh, I hate exercise. It's boring, so I like to learn something while I'm doing it. I'd like to share what I've learned with you in the sweatiest, most miserable, self-indulgent way possible. And if you don't see a video, it means I haven't exercised, and I haven't exercised. It's true. Last week, the last week has been very odd. I don't know, I've been off my game. Um, you know, I'm, I'm such a wimp. I get hit by like every flu there is. You know, Tori, Tori on Stargate used to laugh at me all the time because I was just always sick or thinking I was sick. It's a hypochondria thing. Um, anyways, point being um, is that, uh, I don't know, I feel like that's sort of thrown me off my game. And, and there's been a couple of days where I just like, I just haven't got it together to get on the torture device, and I really, I don't feel myself without it. So, um, so I leapt on it today, uh, not exactly eagerly, but I, I leapt on it, uh, and sure enough, after a few days off, it's just much more difficult, so I gotta, I gotta keep at it. Um, uh, I was also inspired because the Edge of Tech podcast last night, um, uh, you know, to the, uh, talking to, to, uh, to Jim, the Edge of Tech himself, uh, was saying he was, he was trying to trying to trying to get to get fit himself and I thought oh god here I am we're talking about fitness and I'm I've, I've been bailing on my on my uh, on my burn alerts so um, and like I say it's not even so much the exercise I miss I just miss the that pure 66 minutes of learning um, and today true to form uh, back into uh, the data scientist uh, uh, regime that they have on um, on LinkedIn learning uh, still doing uh, data mining which I got to say is kind of my favorite part of all of this so far um, work with a number of different, uh, I guess, programming languages and tools that can be used to analyze data and different ways of doing that, um, using some traditional statistical stuff and also this really fun, um, uh, you know, more machine learning kind of stuff, uh, which is a little bit, a little, a little more opaque, a little harder to understand. But, but just, um, you know, so talking, to, again, you got into some great specifics with Python, with Orange. Um, with uh, what is it called? Um, oh, I'll have to I'll have to put them in the in the in the description because I can't remember the name of like data miner or something like that, uh, data scraper. So I, I, I can't remember. There's some you know cool data mining kind of term, um, and uh, just sort of seeing the limitations of what are good at one thing may not be good at another, and you know what tools are too expensive to use because you need more data and all this kind of stuff. But talking about clustering, talking about how do you refine your searches? How do you, you know, you can put in these crazy complex algorithms to have the, the data analyzed for you, but you really, there's, there, I'm really beginning to see the art. I'm beginning to see this sort of the, the how the generalist can really, can really apply themselves to this stuff because you can start stepping back and go like, well, how does this relate to that? And what do those correlate? And are there connections that aren't being made um, uh, that haven't been made in the past that could be made to help make more sense out of data and stuff. So the clustering thing was really interesting. The idea that just like, you're almost, I mean, it's obviously with a certain amount of, 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 um, uh, of knowledge um, and skill, obviously, but you're, you're basically arbitrarily deciding what your cluster is. Like what, I wanna put groups together, so you sort of give it out, you give the, you can give the data, um, or you can give these tools a suggestion for how you want your data clustered. Or even better, I love the fact that you know, a lot of these, a lot of these programs, it's about saying like, look, I need, give me like five, give me like five basic things that stand out from this data, five key sort of clusters of data um, um, and let the machine run and do it for it. So it, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, the data mining is just oh, fascinating. Um, as is the 3D printing last night, Edge of Tech. If you didn't get a chance to see it, get on, check it out. Um, had so much fun. So we got Jim there. We had Pooch who got me the rep cord. Pooch is Repcord, and this stuff um, I'm printing my I'm printing my flexi unicorns in um, in his um, 
in his what is it his army camo pack or whatever it's called uh, of rep cord and uh, and so far I gotta say it's uh, it's adhering beautifully um, so that's why I'm that's that that's why I'm talking a little louder to try to compete with that um, but uh, yeah so Pooch was there uh, we had Walter uh, which is um, uh, country 3D. We had uh, BV3D, Brian Vines, the fabulous Brian Vines. Um, and uh, did I miss anybody? Who did I get? There was Jim, there was Pooch, there was me, there was Brian, there was Walter. There you go. So I got everybody. Um, and of course, a host of other people on the, uh, on the chat. Just gah, great time. So make sure you go check that out. Um, and then the rest of the day, as I said, I spent with the school, with McCordick. And the big thing I learned, the thing that I took away from from McCordick was, well, one is that they love these flexi rexy things and I have to make more of them because, uh, because, you know, to see them, to see them out there in, as a part of their day, you know, these little, these little pink, little pink dinosaurs that I printed the last time, um, to see them being incorporated into the day, uh, for these kids and them enjoying it is just like a, what a, this just a fabulous feeling. Um, especially from the 3d printing nerd standpoint, like it's just like, I made something, I didn't make anything. I, I printed this and now they like it. Um, so, uh, so working on that, I got to figure out a way of trying to, I want to I want to somehow design them into raccoons so I can have flexi raccoons that go with my tech bandits thing because they're the, the tech bandits they're called bandits because they're I, I keep thinking of the trash bandits which, which is what our raccoons look like they look like they've got little masks on and they're always in the garbage um, so um, that was just incredibly rewarding and also the other thing that I found um, was the cameras the kids love cameras and the staff were very concerned that the cameras didn't get broken and you know, um, and I was like, look, I, I, I bring these understanding that if something happens, it happens. Like I, I, I don't want to miss an opportunity with these kids. So, you know, the, the kid had my, my DSLR, my, my lovely Sony NEX uh, DSLR with a, with a zoom recorder on top of it. And he's just, he was just having, I mean, he's drooling all over it, <laughs> but, but he was having the most wonderful time with it. He sat me down and sort of, and took like a very shaky shot. I mean, most of the footage is, well, in fact, the majority of the footage is completely useless. But the point was, this kid was excited by the camera um, and was obviously trying to figure it out, uh, which I just found so, it was just so fantastic. But what it made me think was, I need more GoPros because the GoPros are these little self-contained cameras. They're not with me right now, but they're so um, rugged. They're designed for like extreme sports. Well, this is extreme education. So I need to get a bunch more of these little GoPros. I have the GoPro seven. I love them. I'm going to get a, I'm going to figure out how to get some more because, because I think in an ideal world, I walk in there and I distribute cameras and I pick them up at the end. And, and I just, I would love to see what the kids do with it. Um, uh, you know, because I, I, there was a sense of responsibility that you saw them sort of like, like with this kid, I handed this kid the camera to play with it. He, he just, it's like he, he went from this sort of slouched kid to this, suddenly he was, it was important and he sort of walked around with this thing like he was like a, like a, like a king with a scepter. It was just, it was, it was fantastic. So I've suddenly seen the power of, of, you know, recently with, of cameras because, because my kids, even my kids, my tech bandits kids, you know, they definitely gravitated towards making a little, you know, bandit strike back video. Um, and I'm beginning to realize that, that maybe, maybe there is another tie-in for my film and television connections. Maybe it's not film and television and then my tech bandits thing. You know, maybe there, there maybe my film and television can actually help influence this stuff more than I, more, spe more, more, um, uh, more specifically in film and television than I, than I thought. So I'm very, very excited about that. Now the printer's making some odd choices. It looks like it just knocked the head off one of my unicorns. So hopefully the other three will print fine. Um, I keep pausing and then gluing parts down if they, if they come up. Um, not the proper way of doing it, but I figured it'll work in a, in a, in a pinch. Um, so, uh, so that was my day yesterday. Yeah, just a truly amazing experience. Um, thank you again to everybody who supported us on the weekend with our Stargate uh, uh, viewing party. Uh, that was, uh, my son had so much fun. Um, I was sort of, I was, I was giving him a bit of grief after because he was trying to sort of hurry me off so he could go and do his, um, his video games. But, um, so we chatted about that and, and, and uh, he didn't quite understand. He was like, well, but the questions, why would the questions ever stop? And I was like, well, the questions, they may never stop. But I said, I feel like, you know, you don't want to, I don't want to seem like I'm trying to rush off. And so he, he's agreed that in the future he will, he will, he will, uh, he will block off more time for our, for our, um, our, uh, our Stargate viewing party. So I thought that was kind of, that was kind of cute that he's like, he's trying to sort of figuring out how to schedule them better. So, um, so there you go. That is, uh, my 
incredibly fortunate, lucky, lovely life that I'm leading right now. Um, I have to huge, huge thank you to the folks at McCordick who were so patient, um, not only with the, with the kids under their care, who they look after so amazingly, but also with me tripping over myself and my cameras and everything else in the school. Um, I, cannot, I cannot tell you uh, how, uh, God, how inspiring um, the people at McCordick are in, in the work that they're doing. And uh, just seeing them get through to these kids is just ah, fantastic. So uh, until we geek again, sweaty or not, here I come and cheerio!